Assalamualaikum. So today I'm going to talk about Volta metric. Volta metric. Metric is the measurement of I, the ampere versus volt. Okay, so at the end of this topic, you should be able to describe the principle of voltammetry. So there are two uh, type of voltammetry will be discussed. One is polarography, another one is cyclic voltammetry, and their application in qualitative and quantitative analysis of analytes. So this is the flowchart of the overall electronic methods or techniques. So you have seen this before. So electronic method is divided into two. One is bulb method, and another one is interfacial. So under interfacial is uh, two more. Uh, it's divided into two. One is static method, which does not involve current. Current is zero, and dynamic method. The uh, involve current, so where I current is greater or zero. Okay, so under dynamic methods, so there are a lot more uh, methods or techniques uh, divided into two. One is control potential, another one is control current. So under control potential, there is the voltammetry. So the measurement of current as a function of potential. So voltammetry, so measurement of current as a function of applied potential during electrochemical processes producing IE plots. Okay, so the measurement of ampere and volt, current and voltage. So at the end, you will plot I versus E plot. So this plot, we call it polarogram if under polarography or voltammogram okay so it will give information of an analyte so this is your uh, unknown uh, ion or species by measuring the current as the potential is varied so field of voltammetry was initially developed from polarography so this is the classical method we call it polarography so polarography is using mercury as the working electrode. So in order to do this analysis for voltammetry, so you must have three electrode potential state. One is working, second is reference electrode, third is counter electrode. This is three electrode potential state. So working and reference will measure voltage E. So working and counter electrode will measure A or current I. Okay, this one. So you will plot I E plot. Okay. So for potentiometry, previous topic or method potentiometry, you just need only two electrode, working and reference, in order to measure the potential difference between indicated electrode and reference but in this case you need an additional electrode which is counter electrode in order to measure current because in this technique it involves current so the modern type of voltammetry involves the linear sweep voltammetry lsv square wave voltammetry swv differential plus voltammetry dpv and striping, striping either anodic striping or cathodic striping voltammetry and cyclic voltammetry. So in this syllabus, okay, so this uh, syllabus I have divided into three parts. This is part one. The second part, I'm going to talk about polarography. The third part, I'm going to discuss about cyclic voltammetry. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to introduce you about voltammetry. So the application of voltammetry in quantitative analysis, quantitative, quantitative analysis means that you are going to determine the active species in the test solution. Okay, you are going to know how much uh, ion present in that uh, unknown solution. For qualitative, qualitative it means you identification. You want to measure whether uh, to know whether 
the process is reversible, involve oxidation and reduction, or irreversible. You are going to, uh, I'm going to talk about this uh, in the uh, part three, and then the adsorption processes on surfaces, whether the adsorption occur on the working electrode or the electron transfer mechanism. Either it involves electron transfer mechanism. So all this will be discussed in details in part 2 and part 3. So now, look at this uh, voltammetric working electrode. This is very important. Okay, the working electrode. All the measurement occur on the working electrode will be measured. Okay, all the uh, measurement uh, is done or carried out on what is happening on the working electrode. So there are three electrode, working electrode, reference electrode, and counter electrode. But what is happening on the working electrode will be measured, okay, quantified. So there are uh, different form of working electrode. One is solid state electrode, okay. It could be in the planar form or rod form. This is example of rod. Okay, working electrode in the rod uh, shape. So this is this electrode. This all in the form of this. Okay, you know the size of the the circle. The here. Okay. So this is carbon. Probably this is gold. So this is probably platinum. Okay. All these are called this electrode. Okay. You know the size, the area of the exposed area of the working electrode. Next is this is special electrode about mercury. So this is the photo of mercury electrode. It could be in the form of hanging, mercury drop electrode, HMDE or dropping. Okay, so this is the capillary. So mercury at the top in the reservoir will issue through this capillary and it will form hanging. Okay, this size. So this is mercury electrode. So, the unknown will reduce on the mercury electrode. So, this is under polarography. Okay, polarography is the use of mercury electrode. So, what, what is so special about mercury will be discussed in part 2, polarography. So, next, is this is the portable, uh, for example, in diabetic, uh, to determine glucose diabetic uh, patient used to measure the con the amount of glucose in their blood. So they use this three in one electrode. This is portable and the uh, most, uh, the easiest uh, way of uh, measuring the unknown. Okay, so because in the one strip here contain all these three electrodes. Okay, the working is the where the measurement will be carried out is on the working electrode. You just dip this three three in one electrode into a test solution in your blood sample, or you just put a drop of your blood sample on top of this three electrode. So this will be connected. The connection here will be connected to the uh, device. So then you will see the result of your glucose uh, amount. Okay, so in, in it can it comes in the form of, uh, in this type screen printed carbon electrode. This is carbon, the working, or you can also have can buy this uh, instead of carbon gold working electrode SPG. Okay. Next, the characteristic of working. This very important electrode. This is working. Okay, where the measurement will be carried out or done. Uh, this uh, the working electrode. It must have wide potential window range. Okay, what does it mean? So, uh, this is the potential window range. It's a clear. There is no reaction if you run the supporting electrolyte. Okay, so at this end, so this is the limit. Oxygen evolution. So, until, for example, this is positive 1. This is negative 1 volt. So, then this is the limit. So, for anode. So when it acts as anode, the working acts as anode, so this is the limit, oxygen evolution. When it acts as cathode, so the hydrogen, the opposite, the hydrogen evolution. You will see bubble on the working electron. So this is where the clear, there is no current 
um, active species present. So this is called potential window range. It's suitable. This range, this region suitable to be used to do the measurement of active species. So this is the limit. Oxygen evolution, OER, or this side is HER, hydrogen evolution. Okay, we do not want the interference from the bubbles, the formation of bubbles. As anode, the oxygen form or the cathode, the hydrogen, will form on the working electrode. Next, the working electrode must have this chemical inertness, highly chemical inertness. It should be made from the material, the working, that do not react with the solvent, okay, in the solution. Okay, so we do not want the working uh, will dissolve in that solvent. It must be stable and inert to the chemical uh, solution. Next, it must have low resistant material. Okay, so R must be very low. So when, when R is low, so the current, the conductivity is high. Okay, because we want to measure current. So the current must flow through that material. If you use high resistant material, for example, plastic, you cannot measure the current of the flowing on that surface. This is the supporting electrolyte. So you must choose the best supporting electrolyte such as solvent, okay, in order to do the analysis. Okay, this graph or this plot shows the approximate potential window range, the blue line, okay, of hydrogen. So this is... Uh, this is negative direction potential, okay, negative. So the limit is hydrogen evolution. So this is the positive direction, E. So this, the limit is oxygen evolution, okay. So uh, on different electrodes, there are three different electrodes, platinum, mercury, or graphite, okay, used as working electrode. So the limit Okay, the negative direction is the reduction of water to form hydrogen. So this is the limit for that uh, different electrode in different electrolyte. Okay, so if you proceed to this potential, so it start to form bubbles. If you extend to more than this positive potential, it start to form oxygen. For example, in this uh, electrolyte using mercury okay so there is a limit in order to do the analysis to this the clear area okay owned by this electrolyte can be used to measure the presence of unknown analytes okay so the current will increase here you can measure the current by because the current produced is directly proportional to the unknown, the concentration of analyte. Different electrode in different electrolyte, either acid or base, neutral, okay, will have different potential range. This is the potential window range. Okay, so you must know what is the suitable supporting electrolyte. This is supporting electrolyte. Uh, when use uh, what type of material as working electrode okay by knowing this range you can easily do the analysis if you do not know the range you probably will do analysis out of the limit so it will uh, involve the evolution of hydrogen will interrupt or interfere in your analysis okay so then uh, there are two plotting convention okay so some don't get don't get confused with the uh, plotting okay the plots okay because different country use different uh, plotting convention for example for polarographic convention uh, US okay uh, American use this uh, style so for IUPAC this is UK or British. We follow this UPEC convention. Okay. The difference is the current. Okay. For this is the potential E. This is current I. 
okay you uh, this e on the right uh, direction this is the positive potential positive and the left is negative okay but for polarography or us style so this is the negative direction on the right hand side so this e is positive direction okay opposite okay so when this is positive so when you see the plot of current increase upward so this is the current positive so this is oxidation process okay so the working is anode when you see on the downward direction so this is the negative current so negative is reduction okay e negative i negative it is a reduction process for uk iupac convention i positive e positive is oxidation for iupac or uk okay but for us i uh, positive i positive e negative is reduction opposite okay to the uk reduction i uh, negative i negative downward negative e positive it is oxidation okay the different only on the current okay as well as this we will discuss this later in the uh, third uh, part cyclic voltammetry okay so us convention the reduction is the positive current the oxidation is negative current but for uk or iupac oxidation is positive current positive negative reduction okay so this is about plotting the polarogram or voltammogram this is the linear sweep voltammetry okay there is only one direction scan okay so it start from here for example here it start zero volt v1 the initial uh, voltage is zero volt and it stop at v2 what potential uh, voltage 2 new uh, voltage new voltage which is negative 0 0.4 volt okay just one direction from here it will scan or sweep to this stop at negative 0 0.4 volt okay so example this is the iupac because the current is negative okay the flow is through negative current so for reduction reduction negative is the uk convention so example in this case is the copper 2 plus reduced to copper 0 deposition of copper plating or copper film on the electrode working electrode so so it if you can see here so here the increase of current here is the kinetically controlled the lower low potential is controlled by electron transfer okay yeah the electron transfer will control the process in bit uh, this is the plateau here is the maximum here is controlled by mass transport okay the movement of copper 2 plus to the surface working electron this control the process in between electron transfer and mass transport is the combination the mix control electron transfer plus mass transport okay so this line is diffusion control this is the second part second the reaction here okay so try to avoid this to produce a very smooth film copper film because uh, this is the starting of hydrogen evolution this process bubble will start form here and more hydrogen will form when you increase the potential okay so the dotted line here is uh, without stirring okay so there is no limit there is no plateau for the dotted reaction okay similar reaction but there is no control by diffusion okay there is well defined plateau and poorly defined plateau okay there is no convection for this uh, poorly defined plateau okay so i hope you understand now 
uh, about the floating. Okay, are you back? Because the current is negative because this is direction at uh, the reduction. Okay, so if you want to plot for holographic convention or US style, so this is the way. Okay, so it in the first quadrant. Okay, so this is negative direction for E. This is E. This is I. So this is positive. Current positive. E negative is for US convention is the reduction. So again, it will form this shape. Okay. So this is kin kinetically control. This is uh, diffusion control or mass transport control. So this electron transfer control, this is the combination. Electron transfer, the uh, mix control. Okay, here. This is kinetically control. This is mix. This is the plateau is limiting current. This is mass transport control. The very important uh, parameter to be measured is the IL. Okay, we'll talk this later in polarography. Okay, once you know IL, so you will... Uh, substitute or uh, insert into the equation in order because IL is directly proportional to the concentration of the analyte. Okay, so this when you further up the over potential, so you will see the current increase. So this is the secondary reaction, which is hydrogen uh, evolution reaction. Okay, actually starting from here to here is the reduction of ferrum ferrocyanide ferric cyanide, okay, ferrum 3 to ferrum 2, ferro cyanide, okay, after this line, vertical line is the secondary reaction, which is hydrogen evolution reaction, okay, so if you plot using this US convention, so the E is negative is this direction, I is positive this direction, so this is reduction process, okay, so this first quadrant so this is us for reduction okay so this third quadrant is uk or iupac for reduction okay i hope you understand the difference between us convention and uk convention okay i'm going to talk this about this polarography more details in part two okay now it's about the briefing or the introduction of uh, polarography. It involves reduction of analyte on this is the working electrode. The use of mercury as the working electrode. So there will there are two hanging. So hanging means the mercury will issue from this capillary. So it will stand still or hanging at this tip of the capillary. So you know the size of this drop. Okay, so this is called hanging mercury. So the reduction process, for example, the metal ion will reduce on the mercury surface. Okay, for dropping, okay, so this is dropping. So this is the mercury reservoir of uh, contain uh, mercury. So will issue through this capillary. So it will issue start from the smallest. Okay, become bigger and the biggest, and then will fall down. So this is called dropping mercury electrode. So the reduction uh, of metal ion will uh, undergo on the surface of mercury, dropping mercury. So there are some advantages of using this will be discussed in part two. Okay, so you will plot for HMDE. So this is the plot. Okay, it's a smooth uh, curve or polarogram. So this is dropping so we'll see a ripple of current or fluctuate of current so there is a small current the maximum current minimum current maximum because it uh, start with a small plus and the become bigger so this is the smallest current and this is the biggest current so you can use the value this is the plateau okay plateau here so you want to know the IF, the limiting diffusion current so this is the residual current. So then this is the limit, the maximum. See what you like to know? The limiting current here. Okay. So beside that, you also like to know the E half. Okay. Half wave potential. This is wave, half of the wave. Okay. It's a potential which polarographic wave current is equal to one half the 
of the limiting current. Okay, one half of the limiting current. So this is for qualitative analysis to know what type of uh, metal ion present in that uh, solution, test solution. So from this value IL will be uh, used to measure, calculate the concentration. We will uh, talking about this in part two. Okay, for this dropping because of this uh, small and become bigger and bigger. So the, it, uh, there are two equations. We call it uh, Ilkovic equation involved average current and also maximum current. Okay, we'll discuss later in dropping mercury electron. So the limiting current or limiting diffusion current, the current plateau, this is plateau. Okay, the maximum current at the top, the concentration of species, unknown species at the electrode surface is zero. Okay, on the mercury is zero. So this is the uh, diffusion current. Okay, how the the this uh, the mass transport will go to the surface of mercury. That is the maximum. Okay, current. Okay, then the maximum mass transfer rate. Okay, so which I L is directly proportional to the to C concentration of unknown. Okay, so this is the residual current. Okay, you must plot uh, the blank first. This what supporting electrolyte. Okay, so this is hydrogen evolution. Okay, so so then uh, when you add a uh, sample, for example, metal ion in this supporting electrolyte, you will have different curve. Okay, so then this is the presence of unknown test solution. So you can get the diffusion current or limiting current by subtracting the current of blank or supporting electrolyte. So by having this IL or ID, uh, you can do the uh, calculation in order to know the uh, concentration of analyte, unknown. So half of this ID here, half is the position of the location of half wave potential. So from this uh, value, you know what type of uh, metal ion uh, present in that. Uh, test solution. The yeah, next is the cyclic water metry CV. Uh, forward scan. Okay, this cyclic water metry involve uh, the return of the scan. Okay, so first let's say you start at V1 potential number one, go to potential number two. This is LSV linear sweep. Stop here. But for cyclic water metry, it will reverse, reverse scan back to the original potential. Okay, when you plot waveform for voltage versus time, E versus time, you will plot this shape. Okay, okay, start from here to the switching potential, then back to the original potential. Okay, this is the movement of uh, current. Or potential with time okay but if you want to plot i versus e or ie plot okay or voltammogram so it start here similar to this but this is uh, the axis has been changed from i okay from just now it's time it changed to i okay i versus t start from v1 to v2 okay this one stop here switching potential then you back to v1 back to this this is the reverse scan so if you use this uh, us convention so this is cathodic peak this is the peak so this is ipc okay cathodic current for uh, peak potential uh, peak current for cathodic reduction so this reduction so this is oxidation so this the reverse or the bottom peak, we call it, this is the value here, current, IPA, anodic uh, peak current. So at this peak, at the x-axis, is the potential peak for anodic. So this is the EPC, cathodic. Okay, so this, we call this cyclic voltammogram. 
So the method is cyclic voltammetry. Okay, we scan from one potential to second potential and back to the initial potential. Okay, this is cyclic voltammetry. Okay, thank you.